All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and after four days, we are here. Yes, we are here at the conclusion of Kingdom Come. Yes, I'm gonna be on a cruise by the time this video comes out. So uh, I'll see y'all in like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be getting tanned, I'm gonna be getting drunk, I'm gonna be having a great time hanging out with my sister, right? She and I, we love taking trips together. So here's what we're gonna do, right? Here's, here's how this whole thing works. This video is basically the end of it all, right? The battle, the huge conflict that happens. Now, this is literally everybody against everybody to some degree. The reality here is that much like the various vigilantes that they fought to overcome, Superman, Shazam, Batman, Wonder Woman, all of them, there really aren't any good guys or bad guys anymore. It's really just descended into superheroes fighting superheroes. That's really all it is because a lot of old wounds are coming back out now, right? A lot of injuries are coming back out. A lot of anger, a lot of disdain, a lot of hurt is coming back to the surface. And that's what's happening here. We get this really, really cool statement that's offered where it said, is that the only reason I'm here? Of course, Norman McKay talking to the specter and he says to watch some hideous judgment. Superman and I share the same terror. His face is a mask of confusion. He cannot comprehend how things came to this. Once upon a time, Captain Marvel was one of its mightiest allies. Now, whichever wisdom he once possessed has been dulled by Luther's brainwashing, making the captain a soldier of chaos, the one warrior who can counter Superman's every move and prevent him from continuing containing this battle. Superman believes himself to be the only force on earth powerful enough to end the superhuman war. He is wrong. And the reason why is because we transition to the United Nations where a meeting is being undertaken and you have all these world leaders who are saying this multi-megaton nuclear explosion held in reserve for just this moment. That he says, take a look at mankind's last hope, capable of vaporizing a country, sheathed in a force field, unbreachable by all cataloged metahuman powers, a deployment system that's virtually undetectable. That essentially they've been waiting for something like this to happen. And when this thing goes off, there will be casualties. There will be civilians who will die. But the reality and what humanity is arguing here, what this guy's presenting is he's saying, listen to me and understand there is nothing rational about dispatching tactical nukes into the heart of our own country. But these are not rational times. We are at the flashpoint of human existence. My God, you can hear the battle even here. At any moment, it threatens to spread forth and engulf the world. What then? What do we do in that circumstance? And he says, the only way to ensure that future generations remember this as humanity's final option is to ensure that there will be future generations after today. Let us strike while we still can, Godspeed. And the response is the United Nations fires off these, uh, these jets containing tactical nukes. And so jumping back to this major conflict, again, it's all heroes fighting heroes. And even Norman McKay says that. He says, even in the brightest day, the dust of the battle eclipses the sun itself. The prisoners released by Marvel's Thunderbolts strike out blindly. Wonder Woman's troops return force in kind. Both sides fight with reckless abandon. Whatever heroic moors of combat might once have ruled them becomes nostalgic memories. This is not a fight that will eventually die down. This is a forest fire that's just begun. A war that may well end the world. Any instant now, there will be fatalities and no way to turn back. With Superman deadlocked, their only prayer of deliverance rests with a force from on high. And this is the arrival of Batman along with his entire team. And he says, Batman's legion soars in like a silent cavalry. Man or machine, each agent knows his mission. Stem the loss of life. Prevent the riot while there's still time to exert control. The sheer force of Batman's presence kindles a desperate ember of hope, too late. Right, like there's nothing that Batman's presence can do to calm everybody down. He does what he can, where he can, but in the end, the arrival of Batman is not changing the tide. To make things even more difficult, an argument and then eventually a fight erupts between him and Wonder Woman where he tells her, this whole thing that you have, this idea of killing these metahumans, you're no different than those crazy metahumans themselves, right? Those fanatics, the vigilantes who just believe or who don't really care about collateral damage. You've become the very thing that you swore to fight against. Right, this idea of spreading love and understanding, but don't be afraid to bloody your knuckles doing it. He says, at the end of the day, what you're what you're doing here, everything that you're doing here, is not going to win you back your position with the Amazonians. You're overcompensating, and in your overcompensation, you're leading to the ending of everything. Now, Wonder Woman fires back and is like, why in the world do you believe you have any right to condemn me after all these years of you just vanishing from the entirety of the landscape? We could have used you 
after Superman left. We needed you, and you were nowhere to be found. Superman abandoned us, and so did you at a time when we actually needed you the most. You could have been our liaison to the rest of humanity, our eyes and ears. You could have spoken truth to lies. You could have been this person, but instead you weren't. But you cowered in your bat cave, turning your entire city into a, some kind of a dictatorship, ruling it with an iron fist. Who are you to tell me the problem with operating like some kind of a dictator? After all this time, your hypocrisy still knows no bounds. And in this giant fight between the two of them, suddenly, something catches Batman's attention. And that's when he sees these drones, these jets flying towards their conflict with nuclear bombs. And that's when he switched over to the fight between Superman and Shazam. And it's just this really amazing fight, right? Because the entire time Shazam is not holding back. And that's one of the big differences between the two that in the various conflicts they've had over the years by whatever manner and whatever means that Billy Batson was always the moral compass, right? He always held back because he was never really aiming to kill. That's not the case here, right? Under the mind control of Lex Luthor, his job is to kill Superman. That's his purpose here. So there's no real holding back here. That's why he keeps yelling Shazam. That's why he just keeps like just hitting Superman with all this energy. And that's why Superman is quite literally dying in this fight. And in a lot of ways, people see it happen, but they're so caught up with their own battles that they actually end up missing the fact that Superman is being killed by Shazam. And so switching back to Wonder Woman and Batman, Batman says, open your eyes, Diana, right? Your answer flies on metal wings. Those are nuclear carriers, the ultimate war bringers. Our war is not one of one act of violence at the cost of some lives, our war ends in extinction. If you're that devoted to the Amazon honor, if your soul genuinely longs for atonement on Amazonian terms, then let's keep fighting and let the planes do their work. And the response of Wonder Woman is no. And she ultimately stands down and the two of them end up going after these drones. The problem here is that as Norman McKay is watching this, he says, despite my spectral form, I feel the heat of Batman's lasers. I feel the strain of Titanic muscles and I hear the whisper of a pilot begging for forgiveness because they missed one and one of the bombs comes falling down to its destination. They couldn't get to it in time. And so what happens is you end up having Superman who just seizes Shazam, right? Just grabs his mouth and Billy Batson turns back into his human form. And Norman McKay says, for one frozen instant, the storm clears. Fingers that can fuse coal into diamond crawl across human bone. And in the hush of ears that can hear a cell divide, pick out with chilling ease the scream of human rage. A wave of x-rays confirms the bomb's potency, a telescopic glance calculates the seconds before impact he has to act now and that's when specter says it is time right judgment has come norman mckay the hour tolls our entire journey has brought us to this moment and he says judge and judge wisely that the Spectre needs a human host, and he puts the responsibility on Norman McKay and says, you have witnessed all of this. You've seen all of this unfold, Norman McKay. Judge, who will be condemned in this? Will it be humanity that will end, or will it be will it be the metahumans that will end? What will happen here? And so it's this really, really just beautiful and amazing moment because we're told Superman's palm spasms around Batson's jaw and Batson whimpers. The clock is racing, only moments remain before the blast. And Superman says, listen to me, Billy. Listen Listen harder than you have ever listened before. And he says, look around us. Look at what we've come to. There's a bomb falling. Either it kills us or we run rampant across the globe. I can still stop the bomb, Billy. That much I'm sure of. What I don't know is whether I should be allowed to. Superhumans or mankind, one will pay the ultimate price. And that decision, Billy Batson, is not for me to make. I am not a god. I am not a man. But you, Billy, you're both. And so he says, more than anyone who has ever existed, you know what it's like to live in both worlds. Only you can weigh their worth equally. Fight the brainwashing, Billy. You can let me go. Or with a word, you can stop me. Do you understand the choice that can be made by you alone? And Norma McKay chimes in and says, the tears of Billy Batson answer this question for Superman. And Superman says, then decide decide the world. And ultimately, Superman takes off. And in the moment when Superman leaves, Billy Batson yells, Shazam! And the Seven Thunders come crashing down. Billy turns back into Shazam again, grabs Superman, smashes him into the ground, and goes flying up to the bomb. Now, it's one of these crazy moments, because when this happens, everybody stops fighting. Like, everybody stops, and they're just watching Shazam as he's racing up to this nuclear bomb that's going to annihilate them all. He shouts Shazam three times. The bomb goes off off 
and Billy Batson dies. Like literally he sacrifices himself to save every superhero here. And all the Spectre says is judgment, right? This just super iconic scene of Superman on his knees screaming. If you ever saw that shot, that's where that's from. It's from Kingdom Come. And he's just surrounded by dead bodies. That's it. When he gets up, Superman is eight kinds of pissed. This guy is incensed. And ultimately the Spectre's like, I've done my job, right? Judgment has been has been passed. It's time for me to go. He literally bids Norman McKay farewell. And Norman's like, no, you're not going anywhere, right? Like you're bound to me, right? Like you're literally, your spirit is bound to me if only in the moment. If you really believe that letting Superman just race off and whatever happens next is just, you know, it's whatever. That's what's truly evil because all I saw here was bedlam and tragedy, sadness, right? Just a man who made a series of bad decisions and led everything to this. If you leave now, then that really is an evil thing. And so ultimately we end up following them to the United Nations where Superman's going. And this guy starts to unleash holy hell. I mean, just like starts to rip down the ceiling, right? He's gonna kill everybody here. He's gonna kill every single person here. And the specter says after 10 years, Superman has finally let free a wrath that would cower Satan himself. How can any man possibly calm the fury that he feels towards his prosecutors? And that's when Norman McKay steps up and he says, Clark, don't do this, right? You blame yourself for Captain Marvel, for Magog and Kansas for 10 years that ended today. Yes, you're angry, but in that anger, you're forgetting once more what humans feel. This is what humanity has been feeling for a long time. Humanity didn't just fire off these rockets at you to annihilate you because you just pissed them off one last time. It's because all they've known since your emergence, the emergence of metahumans is fear. They might follow you, they might smile at you, but at the end of the day, in their heart of hearts, they're scared of you because you tower above them. You fly above them, you spend your time above them. They never really see you exist in a watchtower that literally orbits the world, right? Like you are always in a state above them. All they know is fear. You are an omnipresent reminder that they are not you and how easy it would be for you to destroy them. And that's when Superman asks, who are you and why are you here? And Norman says, listen to me, Clark. He says, of all the things that you can do, all of your powers, the greatest has always been your instinctive knowledge of right and wrong. It was a gift of your own humanity. You never had to question your choices. In any situation, any crisis, you always knew what to do. But the minute that you made the super more important than the man, the day you decided to turn your back on mankind, that completely cost you your instinct. That took your judgment away. And he says, take it back. If you want redemption, Clark, it lies in the very next decision that you make. Make it as a man and make it right. And so ultimately, when he's met by the arrival of all these survivors, he's shocked by it all. He's like, how did anybody survive? And we're basically told that between the Flash and between Green Lantern and what have you, that basically some heroes were protected or some metahumans were protected. The big concern though is that humanity still has the same level of distrust. Like Magog is among these people who has survived, right? There's still the same level of distrust trust the same everything right and the question of wonder woman is what do we do now right like what do we do now clark it's still the same thing like we're still super like there's less of us but we're still metahumans right there's still those individuals out there who believe that that fighting is the only way to solve problems and to a degree that's true right violence is not always the answer but it is a answer and it's usually a very effective one and the response to superman is years ago i let those that i swore to protect drive me away we all did and that was the day all of this began and and these people say like we saw you as gods and superman says so did we we saw ourselves as gods too who could somehow lead you into a better place but that's not what you need that's not what humanity needed humanity did not need to be a horse that we strapped a, a rope to and led to water what humanity needed was someone to show them how to get there what you needed was for us to live among you to be a part of you but not to be above you and that will change from this point going forward we will no longer operate above all of you we will work alongside you we will work with you we will help you make the world a better place we will offer our wisdom and our guidance from our own experiences we will bring that to the table i can bring you wisdom and guidance from a long dead civilization that's that was vastly more more advanced than yours was at the time that it expired batman is the most intelligent person 
person in the world. Wonder Woman has the experience and wisdom of quite literally gods. <laughs> we can bring all of this to the table and we can help make you better. And we're going to do this by also using the wisdom of a man who left his legacy on the world by sacrificing his life of Billy Batson. And they actually end up using the cape of Billy Batson as one of the flags at the United Nations. And so what you get is this sort of epilogue where you end up finding out that Wayne Manor has basically been rebuilt. It's been turned into a hospital to treat those who survived the entirety of the soup of the metahuman conflict, but it'll also serve as basically a way to kind of keep those detained. Uh, Lex Luthor's one of those. <laughs> Superman, of course, is recovering. He's accompanied by Wonder Woman, who's also probably offering her own methods of recovery for Superman, if you know what I mean. But you also have Wonder Woman regaining her ranks among the Amazonians, right? Having basically ushered the world into a better place. What you get in the aftermath of this metahuman conflict is really a, a utopia. You get an entire utopia here. And it's a wonderful and a beautiful thing because a lot of these graves are built in remembrance of those individuals who died. And Clark Kent actually starts working to, to set Kansas back to a place where it can be, it can go back to being the breadbasket, right? It can go back to growing crops and different things along those lines. They lead the world into a much better place, into a utopia that they always wanted it to be. And that right there is the value of violence. Had this entire metahuman conflict never taken place in the, in the first place, would this future ever have come to fruition? Would it have ever happened? And the answer is most likely no. If Superman had stayed hands off, if he had remained in his fortress and never gotten involved, you likely would have seen some kind of a nuclear response by humanity and the world would have just been plunged into chaos. Those metahumans who did survive would have annihilated what remained of humanity and they would have taken the world for themselves. And that would have been the end of it, right? That what it took was a massive conflict. It took death and destruction on that scale in order to force the change of both humanity and metahumans because it's only in the Face of such tragic loss that we're actually forced to confront what caused that loss in the first place. In that moment, we're caught up. We're all emotionally swept up with everything that's going on, right? That's exactly what happened here. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Humanity, Lex Luthor, so on and so forth. They were so caught up in the situation that no one ever stopped to take a step back and ask the question, how did we get here? What led us to this point? It was only when humanity or when the metahumans were facing their own extinction at the hands of a new nuclear arsenal and that near extinction came to fruition had it not been for Billy Batson. Had, if that bomb had detonated at ground zero, they all would have been killed. Likely Superman too. I don't know if that would have been the case, but presumably it would have been. Maybe he would have survived. I don't know. But the thing is, most of the entire metahuman population would have been destroyed, right? Like it was only in the face of their own extinction and annihilation that they were finally able to, to peel, black, peel back this, this cloak, right? This blanket of destruction and death and despair and come to terms with what they'd done and the fact that Superman himself had led the human... Uh, the metahuman community on this collision course. It was his actions that led things to getting where they were. And so everything is really kind of settling back down. Norman McKay finds his own measure of hope, reaffirms his conviction in God, goes back to reading the Bible and his congregation grows. It's that kind of thing that serves a greater purpose. What's really cool is like the specter as Jim Corgan shows up to listen to his sermon at one point in time. That's the beauty of it all. And so of course, for the first time in the story, you have uh, Superman and you've got uh, Wonder Woman who basically show up to Planet Krypton, where they sit down and they basically realize everybody's dressed up as superheroes. Not gonna lie, I would go to this place. If this place existed in the real world, I don't know if it does, and if it does exist, I will go to wherever I need to be in order to be able to go there. But I would absolutely go to this place, 100%. And in fact, you know what? Like, if this is something that's like at a major comic book convention, right, of like, they do this at San Diego Comic-Con, we should all go, right? I mean, I don't know if, you know, one or two point, what is it? 2.13, 2, 2, uh, 130,000 people can fit in there, but uh, we'll try. So like, I, I would love, <laughs> <laughs> I would love like to go to a place like this. It just looks amazing. But at the end of the day, it's really the three of them just kind of sitting down and having this conversation and really just being a part of humanity. Not really above them, not really beyond them, not operating outside of them, but basically being among them and just kind of enjoying their life among people. Having this conversation, talking about everything that's going on, right? That, you know, Batman in, in having this conversation says that it's been a long road for rehabilitation for the for all the injured. He says, fortunately, I I'm not laboring alone. I was able to put several members of the Mankind Liberation Front to work in our ad hoc hospital. And when he says he put them to work, he means like slap collars around their necks and 
made them work, which rightfully they deserved. He says they're pulling their weight. Vandal Savage alone has picked up quite a few healing tricks in his 50,000 years. That that's really them just kind of talking about everything that's happening, having this conversation. And what's really, really cool is you end up finding out that uh, Wonder Woman and Superman, they kind of got something going on, right? That Batman's a little pissed off because the stake is well done, which I, you know, you know what? I can't even judge him for that. Whatever, man. But you have this moment where like Wonder Woman and, and Batman or Superman are like, hey, we kind of have something to share. And Batman's like, yeah, you're pregnant. I already know. Like, I know you're pregnant, Wonder Woman, right? So like Superman knocked up Wonder Woman, making a life for himself. That's really what's going on here. It's just, just kind of going forward, right? They want Batman to be the godfather, which I don't know why anybody would ask that, right? I would never ask Batman to be the godfather of my child ever. Well, there would be, there would, okay, I'm, I'll take that back. There would be rules. I would be like, he has to be a Robin at least once. He has to be set up financially for the rest of his life or her life or whatever. They have to be able to drive the Batmobile at least one time. Like they have to be able to take the Batmobile to prom. That's, that's like a rule, right? Like, I mean, I don't know how I would reinforce that. I'd be dead if Batman was like, if it came to that, right? I would have been dead, hence the nature of a godfather. But I'd be like, you have to let my child take the Batmobile to prom. Because how dope would that be? You'd be walking away with other people's prom dates. You know, but nonetheless, it's just one of those things, right? You gotta take, you gotta have the Batmobile. Taking the Batmobile to prom would be legit. But again, kind of being more serious here, right? Getting back down to, to a serious tone and talking about all this, it really is everything coming to a close, right? That this world has achieved a level of peace and a level of, of understanding and really a utopia that was previously never thought possible. All it took was the near extinction of the entirety of the metahuman race coming from a decision that humanity didn't want to make in order for it to happen. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. This was the story of Kingdom Come. Absolutely loved it. Let me know what you guys think about it, and I will catch you all later. Peace.